Hello, I'm Ron Davis. I'm director of the Stanford Genome Technology Center, where we study MECFS. I'd like to give you a brief update of where we are in these pretty uh, tough times. Uh, it's been very difficult for the last year because uh, uh, the laboratories have been closed down for quite a while, and even after we opened the laboratories, uh, we could not get patients in to take blood samples. However, we did have a lot of archive frozen blood samples, and we used those to, lot, to do a lot of studies, especially in a collaboration with Mark Davis. May, many of you may have heard about the uh, study that was done with Abilify. Now, why I am excited about that is that we gave Abilify to my son using the protocol of slowly increasing it, and he has gotten remarkably better. Now, he still can't talk, he still can't eat, he still can't drink, uh, he's still bedbound. However, he can sit in his bed now and do little projects. And that's, uh, I think, even sitting makes him better. So I'm excited about it. I'm sure that it's working, at least in his case. Uh, and we did do a study with, that was initiated by Hector Benilla at the MACFS clinic. He worked with Laurel Crosby, who is a research associate who works with us, and they uh, have now published a paper on this, and it looked like it really helped a lot of patients. Not all, but it did help a large number. Now, that was not a double-blind study, so the patients knew what they were getting, and their optimism can, in fact, change the results a bit, as well as the physician can be very optimistic that he who really wants to help and uh, may have exaggerated the results. That's always a danger with a, uh, a study that's not double blind. Therefore, we need to do a double blind study. And that will allow other physicians that don't know much about this field to use it if it turns out that in fact it shows positive results in a double blind study. Now to do that officially is a problem because it's expensive. Officially, it requires lots of personnel involved doing all sorts of things and documentations. Uh, and uh, it's going to be hard to get a, a, enough money for that. However, uh, Chaitan Kosla, who is here at Stanford, um, he's in chemical engineering. He does a, a, a lot of work with uh, 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 pharmaceutical companies. And he's very excited about this and is really helping us to try to find big donors that could put up the money to do this. He's optimistic because if it shows that it really does work, then it gives pharmaceutical companies something to compare to, where they don't have that at the present time. And that will encourage them to develop new drugs. Now that's long term and we're not, we're, we're not really concerned about that, but it's always good to get more people involved and get more excitement about it. Now, why I'm excited about this is that it will bring in over 100 patients that will then follow them over a course of, of weeks uh, and see how they do. But what we want to do now is to do a much bigger molecular analysis of what's going on. And that's why we're excited about it. So it's going to be another study like our severely ill patient study, which unfortunately is still not published because we're still analyzing data. Uh, it's fairly difficult to have this much data and only have a few people uh, looking at it. And uh, just because we're really limited on how, how much personnel we can have. However, um, we post a lot of the data and it's being helpful to a lot of other researchers. But this new study, now that we know a lot more about from the severely ill patient study, what is important to look at and what's not important to look at, uh, we can eliminate the unimportant things that we were spending money on and now even do new things that have never been looked at before in any MECFS patient. That includes a lot of biochemistry and a lot of genetics. And we'll be looking at genes that have not been analyzed before. And so that's exciting to me because this could, get a, could give us new insights and new possible drugs uh, to try. And so uh, hopefully we can get that study started uh, with some big donations. Uh, there's a lot of effort to try to do that. Uh, this would be a great study to do because we have a lot of preliminary data that it looks like it will, it will work. 
Now, uh, I, I would like to cover a few other things, and I don't want to get too uh, heavily involved in, uh, in, 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 in covering other things that I've talked about before. But one thing I wanted to share with you is the fact that uh, over a year ago, uh, there was a talk given by Juan Santiago, who is in mechanical engineering, uh, looking at blood red cell deformability. And he did a beautiful job of making a, a very elaborate instrument, which collected a mouth and enormous amounts of data. And he concluded that there was no difference in deformability between patients and healthy controls. Now, we were a little bit shocked by that because our earlier experiments showed very clearly that there was one. So we've been trying to sort out the differences there. And then, of course, then the pandemic hit and we had to shut down. And uh, now that we are up and running again, uh, it looks like uh, one of the problems here is time. Uh, that is, when we did these studies, we looked at the blood about a few minutes after it was collected because we had the devices right there by the patients. However, in the mechanical engineering, they don't have any capacity for taking blood samples. And so we had to collect them at the genome center and then take them over to the mechanical engineering, which is about a mile away. And so we're, we're, the timing there is a real issue. And also how the samples were processed was different. And so uh, it looks now like there is actually, uh, it, that timing was really the problem. And we've also now know as uh, a work done in the University of California, Davis, an investigator there has been studying deformability and finds that the oxygen content of the blood also affects it. And of course, if you have the blood sitting around for a longer time, the oxygenation will change. So um, we're not done yet, but uh, I, I think there probably is a different mobility. Uh, and that just shows in research, you, you can always have to keep investigating and rethinking everything you've done to try to make sure you get the right answer. Now, in addition to that, there's been a recent study done with, uh, with the SARS-CoV-2 virus causing COVID-19. And in th those patients, they also find a deformability difference. Now, in that case, it's possible that these COVID-19 patients actually have MACFS, or it's also possible that any virus infection causes a deformability change. We don't know yet. Uh, but that also helps to confirm our earlier result that the deformability uh, is there. Now, I don't want to go into other too much in other uh, details. I want to just mention the fact that uh, during the pandemic, we weren't just sitting around. We had Zoom meetings. Uh, I've been here at home doing everything by Zoom. Uh, the researchers were also doing uh, participating in these Zoom meetings. Uh, they were doing lots of things of writing. We wrote four grants during that period of time. And we did a lot of data analysis, did everything we could do uh, without doing new experimentations. So that sets us up now to really move much more rapidly uh, in, in doing a, a experimentation. And we've actually initiated on all sorts of new things uh, that I'll be talking to you about at a later time. But I don't want to uh, burden you with a long, long talk. But I'm going to try to do these more frequently now, uh, now that we can actually uh, participate uh, more with other people. I've had my two uh, vaccines already, so I'm much uh, less uh, dangerous for me to get exposed. And uh, hopefully many of the people in our lab will also get vaccinated. And, if, and, and I'm hoping this pandemic will completely go away really, really soon. But we are up and running now and pretty much full capacity and with a lot of experiments. And I'm really thankful for the patients that are now coming in and giving fresh blood samples. I know that that's a very difficult thing to do, but uh, we've had no problems in the laboratory. And Stanford has done a great job and our county has done a great job of keeping the virus suppressed. Thank you very, very much.